All right, moving along to step number four, grabbing the API key from the U2 to MP3 API. Before we do that, I do want to remind you that we have not completed the post route from the back end. So let's go ahead and work on this a little bit before we move on to this step, but we will be completing this step in this video. All right, let's go over to our index.ejs file. And right here where it says action, I want you to include a dash there. I forgot to add that in the last video. All right, now that we have this information here, convert-mp3, this is gonna be the name of our post route. And it is a post route because we said that this method was a post route. All right, so let's go back to our backend here in the post. And now we know that this is gonna have a name of convert-mp3. And we're also gonna make this an async function. All right, this is where we're going to make the API call to the YouTube to MP3 to convert our YouTube video into an MP3. But what happens if the user does not enter a video ID if they leave it blank? Well, we have to check for that. So let's grab the user input and store it in this variable video ID. And to grab user input, we do rec body. And then we're going to use the name that we gave that input field, which is video ID with a capital D. Let me show you. All right, so look at the input field and notice the name says video ID. So this is what we're gonna use to grab the user input in the back end. All right, let me do a console log so you can see what this is returning. All right, let's go over to the project and we're gonna click on this button. We're not gonna type anything in here. This program is gonna crash, but that's all right. We're just testing this and notice that it did not return anything here and it returned an empty string actually so we have to look out for that and return a message telling the user hey you need to enter a video id so we're going to replace this with an if statement and we're going to check if video id is equal to undefined or if video id is equal to an empty string or if video id is equal to null and if it is we're going to return this same page so let's render index but we are going to return two messages as well so we're going to return a message not a message but success is going to be a variable that we're going to return and we're going to make this false because we were not successful in turning the the video into an mp3 and we're also going to send a message so this is going to say please enter a video id all right otherwise we're going to do an else and this is where we're going to make the function call to our api but let's go ahead and test this out to make sure that it's working all right let's get rid of the dash and then convert mp3 and let's click enter let's click this again and now notice that it returned this error please enter a video id once this is done we can go grab our api key so let's open up a new tab and we're going to search for the rapid api if you don't have an account go ahead and create one and then once you do you're going to search for the youtube mp3 api All right when you click on that it's going to take you over to their documentation but before we look at this let's look at the pricing all right, once you subscribe to this API, they're gonna ask you for your credit card information, but don't worry, they're not gonna charge you. They do that for anybody that's trying to subscribe to any of their APIs here at Rapid API. So this is the plan that we're gonna get, the $0 a month. We're gonna have a total of 200 requests per day, and this is a hard limit, meaning that if you go over 200, the API is simply gonna stop working. All right, now let's look at the documentation. So this API is actually very easy to use. All you need to include is the ID of the video that you're trying to convert into an MP3. And they actually already included an ID for us. So we can go ahead and test this. And as you can see, I returned the link to the MP3, the title of the song, and a few other information in there. Let's go back to the code snippets. Please select Node.js. 
and this is your API key please keep this a secret I'm just showing you for the tutorial but I'm gonna go ahead and reset it before I release this video all right we want to copy that key let's go back to our project and we're gonna open up the env folder let's place this key in here so we're gonna create a variable and then we're going to paste that key in there and let's also create a variable for the host so let's go back over here and copy this as well the reason we're doing this is to hide our personal information that way when we send the project over to github nobody could access our api key but currently if we send the project over like this this env file is included with the rest of the files so whoever looks at our repository is going to be able to look at our api key which of course we don't want that's where this .get ignore file comes into play. So let's open this up. So in this file, we're gonna include whatever we do not want to send over to GitHub. And this .env file is one of the things that we do not wanna send. We also don't wanna send this node modules folder here. It's actually a very big folder. So let's include that in here, node modules. All right, let's exit out of that. And now we can begin creating our API call. All right, let's store the response to the API call in this variable fetch API. And we're going to use fetch here. And let's include the URL to where we want to make the API call to. And that URL is this one here. All right, we're going to paste that in here. And we also have to include a question mark ID equals. And let's include the video ID that we're trying to convert into an mp3 in here All right let's add a comma brackets and we have to indicate what kind of method this is this is a get method and we also have to include headers that contain our sensitive information so the first thing we're going to add is the API key so to access the variable that we created in the .env file, we do process.env and the name of the variable, which we called API key. And we also have to include the host. All right, once that's done, we're going to grab the response, turn it into JSON, and store it in this variable fetch response. All right, and now we have to check if this was successful or not. So let's create an if statement, and we're going to check if fetch response status is equal to okay this means that it was successful so in this case we're going to render the index file and we're going to send a couple of things over first we're going to set success equal to true and then we're going to send the song title And we're also going to send the song link. All right, now let's create the else statement. So if for some reason the API is not able to convert this video into an MP3, then we want to return the message that the API is telling us why it was not successful. So we're also going to render the index file here and we're going to set success equal to false and we're going to send a message over containing the reason why all right and that should do it all right let's test this out so we can exit out of here now all right let's go over to youtube to find a video and you can select any video you want. All right, the video ID 
is the number next to V equals this number here, everything before the and symbol. All right, so we're just going to control C and let's paste it in here. Click convert and there's the MP3. So we can click this to download. And if you get an error called in process, go ahead and just enter the video ID again, click convert. And usually it's able to convert it into an MP3. And also, if you're trying to convert a video that is more than 10 minutes long, this might not work. So please make sure that your video is less than 10 minutes. And that's going to be a four part number four. Thank <music> you.